Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of the Movie Crusaders. My name is Sean Wasserkrug and today we're going to be reviewing the latest Zack Snyder film going back and reviving the zombie genre that made him so popular to begin with, Army of the Dead. Army of the Dead came out last week in theaters and debuted this week on Netflix. Uh, sadly, I had to wait until the Netflix release in order to watch this. Um, but I, this was this was definitely a movie that seeing the trailers, uh, I was actually pretty excited to see. Um, obviously, uh, Dave Batista, former pro wrestler, you guys know me with my pro wrestling background. Uh, he's actually been making a lot of smart acting decisions lately. We you know with Drax and. Heck, even going with the you know the kids movie route with My Spy, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, uh, Skyfall. Oh no, it's not Skyfall. Spectre. Um, Batista's done a really good job of showing growth in a lot of his acting performances and not trying to go down a uh, a typecast uh, kind of road as a lot of professional wrestlers do. And with Zack Snyder, I mean everyone knows Zack Snyder. He's already coming off of a for, for most people, a huge win with the Snyder Cut for the Justice League for HBO Max a couple months back. And for him to go back to literally what made Zack Snyder you know, huge, which was his uh, 2004 remake of Dawn of the Dead, seeing him come back to the zombie genre with Army of the Dead was definitely something that a lot of people were taking, uh, taking some attention to. And then obviously the trailer uh, brought a lot of of eyes on this and had a lot of people excited to see exactly where they're going to go with this as it's uh, basically a zombie film in Vegas. It's a heist film. Uh, so many tropes, so many options you can go for. Uh, does it work or does it have too many, uh, too many things going on with it that makes it just kind of fall apart? Um, we're going to find out here real quick. Uh, the actual plot of the army of the dead is it follows uh, following a zombie outbreak in Las Vegas, a group of mercenaries take the ultimate gamble venturing into the quarantine zone to pull off the greatest heist ever attempted. Um, basically, with this movie, uh, there's so much. There, there, there's so much to talk about when it comes to this film. Um, first off, the movie's two and a half hours long. Uh, we'll, we'll get to the length here in a, in a little bit. Um, but with this movie, and I think that's like this with most Zack Snyder films, Zack likes to have a little bit of everything. In his films a little bit for everyone to enjoy like in this particular movie you got your horror with the zombies you've got the the heist for people who like heist movies you got the action you've got drama you've got uh, a, a very well developed story for all the characters you got pl plenty of time to kind of learn and get to know these characters so you can care about them you know whether they live or die um, plus it, it, it leaves a lot of things kind of open-ended with questions and uh, open-ended in terms of what's exactly going on and how how this world actually really is. Zack Snyder really loves giving you that kind of all over around performance. Some people think it's a little too much um, and it can kind of lose track of the main focus of the story. And other people really, really, you know, love that kind of story that Zack Snyder does. Uh, first things first, um, I, I, I will say this and many, many, many spoiler. Like it's many spoiler, like within the first like five minutes. So basically, according to Zack Snyder in this film, the zombie apocalypse starts because of Roadhead, <laughs> which to me was very uh, Michael Bayish in a way, just kind of like teenage amateur uh, jokes that just fall flat. Uh, to me, I mean, that that was a huge eye roll to start off this movie is basically um, and the reason why I'm explaining this is, is so the movie starts with this army uh, convoy going down the road on their way through uh, Nevada. And uh, there's this uh, there's this new newlywed couple who just left Vegas. The wife's basically taking care of the new newlywed husband because she he made her an honest woman. And he veers into the army convoy, causing the crash crash and releasing basically patient zero uh, or the zombie alpha causing the zombie outbreak. So once again, um, just, yeah, the zombie apocalypse literally begins because of road head, which ugh, I hated that. I hated that. That, that was the, the joke that started the film, but, but as soon as we get past that scene, um, we get the actual introduction to this film. 
Um, Zack Snyder does basically almost like a five to five to seven minute kind of credits opener that is basically is a super, super exciting um, kind of almost what we would have gotten in the original film of a zombie outbreak film. We, we, we see the main characters. We see Dave Bautista who plays Scott Ward. Um, we see Omari Hendrick or Hard Hardwick who plays uh, the, uh, Van. I was going to call him Van because uh, Van Drophy, I think is what his name is. And I'm going to say that wrong. We get Anna Della Raguria who plays Maria Cruz. We get, um, all these characters introduction to us in, the, in in so many credits, and they're going through little segments, uh, going in the Vegas, taking on the zombie horde, trying to save people, evacuate the city, um, and we're basically learning the story of this world in this opening credits. It's very um, for everyone who loves Zombie Land, where like they had the whole like crazy opening credit scene where. You're playing a great uh, sound, a great song, and you're watching just a bunch of crazy ass scenes to set up the world of Zombie Land. This is a lot like that as well with Army of the Dead. We're seeing these characters um, who are basically uh, sent into Vegas during this zombie apocalypse to rescue as many people as they can before they wall off the town, leaving keeping all of the zombies locked in. Uh, Las Vegas. Uh, so basically, Las Vegas is is basically the only place where the zombies are because they have walled off the whole city. Uh, then that leads to the actual start of the film. Once we get past that, that that opening credit scene. Uh, once we get past the whole roadhead starts the apocalypse. That opening credit scene is fantastic. Um, I part of me wants a full movie of that, but it's also one of those things where we've seen those movies. A ton of times. And I think that's the beauty of what Zack Snyder is doing there. He's like, I could make the same zombie film that you guys have seen over and over and over again with this and show you, you know, oh, the zombie apocalypse has started. We're going to send this group in. We're going to save a bunch of people before we can get out. But we've seen that kind of film before. Not Zack Snyder's version of it, but we've seen that kind of film before. So he does it all in the first, like, 15 minutes of the film it, through through uh, opening credits. So, I mean, ov obviously, a brilliant choice. But the way Zack Snyder has shot this, I want to see that movie. I really want to see that first film. Now, I do. I have heard that they were going to be getting a uh, like an animated uh, Netflix series, uh, which is basically going to show us that story uh, on Netflix. So I will definitely be checking that out. Um, but now we go ahead uh, into the actual story. Uh, Scott Ward is basically flipping burgers at a uh, at a diner. Everyone's kind of gone their separate ways. Uh, but they're all brought together by um, Hiroki Sanada's Bly Tanaka, a.k.a. Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. Um, and he brings them together basically saying, hey, I will give you $50 million to split amongst yourselves if you guys can break into Las Vegas, get to this vault that has over $200 million inside, and get out before, um, before they nuke Las Vegas, which has a whole political storyline that's going on. Uh, in the story where uh, they're deciding whether to nuke uh, all of Las Vegas to try to kill the zombie horde. There's um, a whole other side story of them, you know, with these like political like outposts around Vegas where they're holding people kind of in, in camps that may or may not be infected. It's a whole other political story that to me doesn't really work or not necessarily really matter to the main story. Once again, Zack Snyder's kind of grabbing from everywhere and, forcing it into the story overall. But so then after that, we get about a good uh, 45 minutes of kind of assembling the team, which I think for most, for the most part in a lot of movies, this either works incredibly well or it is incredibly slow and you're just kind of getting bored and you're waiting for the action to, to start. I think in this film, I think Zack Snyder does a really good job of building this world uh, of these characters, getting us to understand who these characters are, what their motives are, why they're doing what they're doing, and building up the team. Each character is kind of getting their own little mini introduction as they're um, we're showing what their good qualities are, why they're why they're being asked to do this role of this heist. Um, what what do they bring to the table, and how much money they're going to get doing this? Because they're not all they're not getting the main money that Batista. And um, his main partner, Maria Cruz, played by Anna de, Anna de la Raguria, um, is uh, basically taking – they're going to take the big bulk of it, and they're going to kind of split off between all the other people. 
I think it does a really good job at this point of, of building the characters up. So that way there's more weight to these characters when some of them um, untimely die in certain situations throughout the film. Um, then we get into the, the uh, second hour of the film, which is them going into Vegas. We, we meet a few more characters such as uh, uh, Kate Ward, uh, Scott Ward's daughter played by Ella Purnell. Um, there's a storyline right there, which I think is a, a really strong storyline that has a ton of potential and while they want that to be a very, very important storyline throughout the rest of the film, I think they needed a little more time to make that a little more grounded. They do give it some good moments. They do. I'm not saying they don't give it enough time. It's just there's certain there's certain moments where like they probably could have hit that a little bit harder. Um, so that way at the end it it it's uh it hits a stronger note by the end of the film. It's still really good. Dave Batista, I think Dave Batista is probably one of his better performances out there. I think he does a fantastic job of Scott Ward. He does a great job of being the action hero while showing enough emotion uh, of, of the character that we uh, grow to understand his motives and what has happened to him over the course of the zombie apocalypse. Ella Purnell, she probably could have given a little bit more to do as Kate Ward. She kind of plays that teenager, the rebellious teenager to uh, Scott, um, who is has her own motives to going into uh, Vegas and kind of also makes some stupid decisions along the way. Um, the rest of the actual crew itself, uh, Omari Hardwick, who's a uh, Vandero, uh, I think is an awesome character. Uh, and him along with uh, Matthias Schwakofer, I butchered the hell out of that, um, who plays Dieter, he's the safe cracker. Those two together have, to me, bring the most um, comedy of the film. They are a, they're a great buddy-buddy duo. Uh, and you enjoy the hell out of their characters and their partnership throughout the film. Um, Anna Della Riguria for Maria, I really like her character. I enjoyed her relationship with uh, Batista. Um, Nora and Zeter, she plays Lily, the uh, the coyote who actually gets them into Vegas. I actually really enjoyed her character. Once again, a little bit more from her character goes a long way. I uh, really enjoyed what we got with her on the screen. Theo Rossi plays Burke Cummings, a shady um, kind of like Port Authority cop of one of the uh, camps, uh, which everyone who knows Sons of Anarchy, everyone knows who Theo Rossi is. Um, he plays this kind of character really, really well. And if you're a fan of Theo Rossi, you're going to really enjoy his performance in this film. Um, and then you got Garrett Delahunt. For anyone who watches Fear the Walking Dead, you'll know exactly who he is, among other performances. He plays Martin. He's... Um, Bly to, to uh, Tanaka's security guy. He's kind of like the inside man on the job who is keeping an eye on the entire group. And then, of course, Tig Natero. Uh, Tig Natero plays Marianne Peters. She's the helicopter pilot. Now, what's interesting about this, which I actually didn't know this going into the film, Tig Natero wasn't actually filmed with the rest of the actors in this film. This this role was originally for Chris DeElla, uh, the uh, comedian. Um, they shot this whole film with Chris DeElla, but then due to um sexual allegations and stuff like that they actually cut him from the film and put tig in and tig's performance is done completely off a of green screen um and because of COVID and everything she's not i don't think she ever actually is in for the most part any of these scenes with the actual cast she is kind of green screened in and through camera magic and stuff like that is put in this film to have the conversations with the characters, but not actually in the film for the most part itself. And I didn't know that. And the, and the reason why I didn't know that, which I think works even better, is that I didn't know that, and I still thought she was in this movie the entire time with the cast. So for Zack Snyder to pull that off and make it believable that she is there with them the entire time when apparently she wasn't, uh, way to go. That's, that's flipping amazing that he pulled that off, because I definitely did not know. Um, and then we also got Raul Castillo, who plays Mickey, Mickey Gu uh, Guzman, who's kind of like a, this... Uh, this YouTube sensation at zombie killing. He's a pretty fun character. And then we also have got uh, Samantha Wynn who plays Chambers, which is also uh, one of Mikey's friends. And she has some awesome badass moments. Uh, she is awesome. Uh, I loved her character. Uh, like I said, she's gets, she gets this great kick ass uh, action sequence in the film. Um, definitely. She needs to be pointed out for her, for her badassery in this film. Um, the big thing about this film too, that once again, Zack Snyder does so well because he knows how zombie films work. And the big thing he did with Dawn of the Dead was that he made zombies faster. That's how he made 
um, Dawn of the Dead so much breath of fresh air is that we didn't have the slow moving zombies. Um, and them being super, super fast definitely added that element of horror. With this, he decides to make almost like a whole subspecies and subspecies of zombies. You've got the slow zombies that we know from other, you know, zombie films. I think they're called the Shamblers, uh, which um, they do say something in, right when they get into Vegas that, that they lead to a tease of like, oh, wait. You, you can't wait wait to see how they are when it rains. And you, like, you're waiting for the rain scene to happen, and it doesn't ever happen, which sucks because I was waiting for that moment. Uh, but they're like the slow-moving zombies, and there is a sequence in this film with those zombies that is straight out of a video game, um, like The Last of Us, where you're needing to maneuver and get through these zombies in a, in a way, and it is shot beautifully, uh, and it's hella tense, and I loved every moment of it. And then you got kind of like this, this alpha pack, um, this, this like alpha squad of, of these faster running zombies who are almost like super soldiers that like can come at you like a freight train. And unless you get a perfect clean headshot, they're going to, they're going to F some stuff up. Um, and that's like the Dawn of the Dead zombies, but on like steroids. And then that you've got these uh, alpha zombies, like a king, queen, and kind of like the right hand man that kind of runs the whole thing. Cause they, he decided to not only make these zombies zombies, but he also made these zombies uh, like their own world. They have, there's like a King and a queen zombie. They're smarter than the rest. They're stronger than the rest. Basically the King is obviously zombie zero from the first part of the film. Um, and he has made a queen and there's this whole sub story going on with these zombies. That is so intriguing and so fascinating because we've never actually really seen this for the most part in one of these kinds of films that you want to spend more time with just the zombies and, and seeing how this world has opened up and worked. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's left unanswered. There's certain situations like the, some zombies eyes are blue or like, like kind of like a, like a light, light, light up blue. Sometimes when you kill them, blue kind of fluorescent stuff shoots out of their head. Uh, that's never, ever really explained, but you're kind of wanting to know that kind of stuff. But Either way, the whole zombie outline of this film from Zack Snyder is super intriguing, and it left me wanting to know more. Uh, obviously, also the big selling point that we saw in the trailers, you have Zombie Tiger. Uh, and Zombie Tiger kicks ass. There are He's not just there for that little moment in the trailer. We do get to see Zombie Tiger in action, and Zombie Tiger is definitely well worth the trip. Um, the movie itself, like I said, uh, it's it's super fun. It is very, very fun. When the action kicks in and we get some zombie attacks, uh, especially in the Las Vegas uh, setting with you know the casinos and stuff like that, it is a blast to watch. This movie is so much fun. Um, the action is incredibly well shot. It looks amazing, which that if there's one thing that Zack Snyder knows what, how to do, Zack Snyder knows how to make a movie stylized and look phenomenal. And this movie looks fantastic. No matter where we're at in this film, everything looks great. The zombies look great. The Las Vegas setting looks great. The action scenes look great. Everything about this film looks great. Um, some of the character deaths come out of nowhere and shock you. Um, each characters get their moment to shine in this film. They get their little their moments to make their characters matter, make them a little more important. So that way when some of them live and some of them die, it matters to the audience and what we're watching. Uh, the two and a half hour time limit on this film. Um, some people are going to say it's a little too long. I actually could have taken another hour and a half. I wanted to keep staying in this world. I want, there's so many questions in this film or ants that I needed answers for. There's so many things that were happening. There's, there's a subplot of, of like ultimate, alternate timelines and, you know, whether or not they've been there before. And, and there, there's these little like Easter eggs that you don't quite know if everything that's happening in the movie is really on the up and up. Um, there's certain characters who you kind of wonder, wait, so what happened with this character or where did this go with certain situations um, that you kind of want to, you know, have answered. Obviously the whole mythology of the zombies, I wanted to know a little bit more about. Now for a lot of people with a lot of open-ended questions like that, that can be a negative that can deter from their overall movie experience. And I will say the first, when watching this, uh, when the, when the end credits rolled, I was like, Oh my God, I love this movie. This movie's fantastic. And then like about 15, 20, 30 minutes later, I kept coming up with more and more. Well, wait, why did this happen? Or, Oh wait, 
how did this make sense? Or, oh, wait, they left this out or they didn't, you know, clarify this. That kind of maybe dropped the score down a little bit. Going back and rewatching this again, maybe some of those questions will get answered. But from what I can tell from a lot of the people watching uh, or have seen this film, those answers aren't in there. But this is becoming a franchise, apparently. Maybe those answers will get, uh, maybe those questions will get answered in future installments. We will see. Bottom line, coming to overall uh, thoughts of the film, Army of the Dead is awesome. Um, probably one of Zack Snyder's better films, right up there with Dawn of the Dead and 300. Um, I, I cannot wait to revisit this again. If you guys have a chance to see this in movie theaters, go out of your way to see it in the theater. It is definitely shot for a theater. It is not shot for Netflix. I sadly had to watch on Netflix, but I got a 4K TV. It looked fantastic. Um, I was fully invested in the characters of this movie that I got to see. The zombies are awesome and fantastic. And I wish we had more of this. Like I would love a TV series going more into this backstory, which I think we're going to get in terms of the, the, the opening credit scene. We're going to get a, se a season at least of that. Um, I just want more. I want more of this army of the dead series. Uh, there are a lot of unanswered questions that to me, I feel like if we're not going to get answers for, then it's going to deter from the film overall a little bit. But for the most part, I enjoyed the hell out of Army of the Dead. And I think most of you zombie fans and Zack Snyder fans are going to love it as much as I did. Going to my overall score, I'm going to give Army of the Dead an 86%, which is an A grade. Go out of your way to check this out. Whether it is in theaters or on Netflix, you will not be disappointed. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you guys did, go ahead and hit that like, share, and subscribe button to the channel so you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos to pop up on the Movie Crusaders. And, of course, don't forget to follow us on all the social media outlets you see below. Coming up next um, next week, we've got uh, Cruella, and we've got A Quiet Place Part 2. And, of course, just like every Friday, myself and Brian Michaels will be back with The Weekend Crusaders where we talk about five movies that come out during that weekend in movie history. Uh, the latest episode is out now, and it is definitely a fun one, so check that out. And until next time, in case I don't see you, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, movie crusaders. You're still here? It's over. Go home. <laughs>